Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the AI code editor, the cursor AI. We are going to talk about its features, the MCP, the cursor rules, and we are going to try write unit tests in Golang. So in essence, the cursor AI is an IDE that it has code assistance. For example, if you want to try something, it has an assistant. So with the tap, 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 you can write your code faster and it scans your code base. So it knows your code base. You can ask questions about your project. Maybe you can generate documentation. Or you can just specify some files and just uh, create new features or you can do refactors or write unit tests like we are gonna do in this video. And you can edit your files with natural language. By the way, you can just create one line prompts as well. Like you don't have to scan your full file as well. And I'm gonna show you in this video how you can do that as well. So let's jump to the cursor app. So this is the cursor ID. It is a VS code actually. So I'm gonna press command shift L to open chat. You can actually ask agent and edit but we will use the agent one with the cloud uh, 3.7 sonnet but you can use different models as well and in here the project has all the code base but if i want to do something specific like maybe i want to refactor validate function or add a new feature i can just specify and say uh, add and validate that code and right now it has the context of that file so it knows that i'm talking about this file specifically so i'm gonna delete it again and then I'm going to talk about rules. So before we start to give prompts to the project, actually, if you want to add a new feature or do something, a lot of times you need to give context about maybe your code base, maybe your code standards, or just say do, do this, but don't do this a lot of times maybe. So you need a base file that every time you give something to the project, you know that these are all essential. So you don't have to duplicate them. That's why it has rules. So in cursor settings, rules section you can just give base knowledge to the cursor like so i have golink and net for example if i give a prompt to the project or if i ask something first plan it and explain it to me so if i say okay then write the code for example for the testing rules carefully review the actual class definitions of all involved classes because if you have some custom classes and complex classes sometimes cursor actually doesn't modify all the properties or sometimes it modifies the read only uh, properties and do something that it, it shouldn't do so you need to give some clear statements to the cursor that's why i have this i'm going to share this rule with you in the description by the way and this is the new version actually this is a new version of cursor ai and maybe you have seen cursor rules cursor rules is actually before this rules section cursor was reading the rules with that cursor rules file and people are sharing their rules online so this is one of the most popular one of some cursor rules you can find rules for front-end frameworks like next.js and for node.js for python etc for example let's check out the chakra ui react and it says use chakra provider at the root of your app for example, these are the base rules and then you are giving prompts above this. I will share this link as well. And these are the rules. And this is the cursor directory. It belongs to cursor. It has MCPs, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And it has rules. And as you can see, it has different tags. So let's check out one of them. Like this is for TypeScript. You are a senior TypeScript programmer with experience in the Nest.js framework and a preference for clean programming and design pattern as you can see it has rules for exceptions classes testing and some basic principles for nest.js you can create your own rules and i suggest you to look at these rules and just create a mix of them for your need and the other feature of cursor is mcps so mcps are a protocol called model context protocol it is an open protocol it is an open protocol that allows you to provide custom tools like with your agent, with your cursor AI agent, you can connect your other tools like GitHub, like your database, like your Jira, etc. You can talk with them and, you know, for the Jira, you can get the ticket details and create your feature with the agent, things like that. MCPs are basically actually TypeScript file. Maybe I can create a different video for them how you, that about how you can create your model context protocol. But let's see some popular examples in MCPs. As you can see, you can have a github mcp so you can pull a project and fix your issue fix an issue and then create pull request do things like that as you can see it has it has like features like push rules create or update file search repositories create repository it has features like that and it is basically a typescript file and as you can see the descriptions and files maybe we can talk about them as well 
as I said. So with the MCPs, actually, you can do a lot of things. So let's say from start to the beginning, you can connect to your Jira, you no, know? but you can create your MCP with it. Like I said, we can create a video. We can talk about it in another video. You can connect to your uh, Jira server and get the ticket details, do your features, do your features, what it has it. Then you can connect to your GitHub or GitLab and then create a request. You can do all of them inside of the cursor AI with these agents and MCPs. So how we can connect to an MCP? In here, in settings file, you can see the MCP file. You can add new MCP. You can have a command or SEC and you need to just paste a server name, server URL and server name. And that's it, you can just use your MCP. Like I said, we can talk about the MCPs in another uh, video. Now we can continue with unit tests and use our cursor AI agent. So how we can use it? Let's see. So this is an order API file. We have created this API in our previous videos. You can check out them if you want to, but you don't have to. This is an order API. Basically, it has a get order by ID endpoint. It has a create order endpoint and ship order by cargo code. Ship is actually just setting the is shipped boolean section to the true. That's it. So in this function, it is calling the order service ship order by cargo code and calling the order repository and in here with the GORM library it is updating the ship to true maybe we can create unit tests for here for this function ship order by cargo code right and if it was something small like let's see in mango we are doing some logging right maybe we need to do something about here i could just press command k and give a prompt here like do this with info level and it is suggesting a new thing and it is suggesting the info one. I'm of course I know this is a basic thing and you don't have to do this with prompt, but with this feature you can refactor your functions, you know, and do a lot of things. So this is how we can use the inline editor. But if you want to use the chat and you know just uh, do things with file based or project based, let's see. So ship order by cargo code. I can just say I will just first add the orders.go file and say create unit tests for ship order by cargo code function and i would say don't modify the main files just modify the tests i'm saying it because sometimes cursor ai modifies the main class as well and changing the behavior but i don't want to do that i'm just why i'm dedicating it and make sure handling every case let's see what it will do so so it's looking for the services file reading the serv order service now we have order repository so it is reading the order repository and the interface it couldn't find a test directory so it will create a new file for this it is reading the order structure because it doesn't know the structure and right now it is creating an orders underscore test file in golang you are creating your test files next to the your main files like if it is orders then you need to create orders underscore test file it needs to be and with underscore tests okay it has a new file and it is mocking some of our files like order service for this it is using the mockify sorry testify testify is the one of the most popular libraries for unit testing if you don't know and if i were using dotnet i could use x unit or n unit as you can as you know but in golang most of the libraries are the standard asking for me to run this comment because we don't have the testify so it is getting to testify i will accept the file it is continuing okay it is checking the linter errors because most of the time it has the linter errors in the first try and i wouldn't use the keeping the mock files in the same file i could use um, another file for this maybe i can put it in the rules ai in the rules section as well so let's see it is asking for running the tests okay let's run the test it has permission denied okay let's run it again it couldn't run because of the because it hasn't had the permission okay if it is asking for the sudo now it is getting the more tidy okay resume the conversation okay now it's running the tests okay right now as you can see we have some error we have some error in for a unit test and it says expand it here for the invalid cargo code it has an error so it is it is trying to fix the issue and says it seems that the fiber router is not handling the empty parameter correctly. Let's update our tests. Okay. For this file, is adding a testing empty cargo code. Run again. And say invalid cargo code. Oh yes, we don't have the cargo. Like empty. It has some permission issue. 
just permission issue so let's say stop and use sudo for your go test comments i will give password okay i'm giving my password now we have a different error right yes that's a good thing as you know if we have a different error error message that means we are making a progress <laughs> now it is mocking our ship order by cargo code empty return invalid cargo code it says the error shows that we need to set up the mock for the empty cargo code case okay let's run it again by the way as you can see i am saying run the comment but you can actually close that setting and just say you can just run the comments uh, if you want to without asking me and okay right now great we have created our unit tests and they are all success and right now it has and it says we have we have 87.5 percent coverage which is very good yes and right now it is examining and looking for what is missing right now it is adding more tests to cover that the remaining lines to make it a 100 percent that's great okay run comment great they are all passing it is checking the coverage again okay, let's add one more test okay we have one more test missing but you get the idea so in order to not make this uh, video longer I will just stop it but you got the point right okay so right now we have the mocking files and we have our uh, test ship by cargo code uh, cases like we have different cases like for this name for this cargo code and you know we're giving the setup and in here it is running the tests but let like I said I don't like to keep the mock files in the same file so I will just say for the orders test file move mock functions to another file you can create a folder for it i'm not specifying the folder name so it not to create itself okay it is creating a one under the tests mox file and moving them of course i could do it by myself but i'm just trying to show you the way you know uh, how we can uh, use it you can use it for your complex projects okay it says now let's update the orders tests file to use the mock from the new location okay great it has moved the files to here except the file Great, let's come to here again. Okay, you're running the implementation and project again. It is identified to remove the mock implementation. Of course, this is a simple thing. So you so you could do this by yourself, but you could do complex things that um, when you are making this or when you are generating this, you could just lose your time. But with this approach, you can just make sure you are giving the cost. You are just giving instructions to the AI assistant, so it could do it while you are focusing on another thing. Okay, I can cancel it because it already moved to files. And that's how you can create unit tests, but it has the files in here, I think. Let's see. I have the files in here, right? Yes. Okay. So if I just delete this mock order service, I can have, I have the mock order service. So in here, just delete this, delete this, delete this. Okay so let's run the tests and they are all passing great so as you can see it has it has wasted a lot of time because of the imports and i don't know why but in in .NET projects as well it is really struggling with the imports i'm not sure why but if you are editing with the imports and if you see that it is importing the wrong thing or just trying to delete the things that uh, it wants to delete but it couldn't find just cancel it and stop it and delete or update yourself because you are just gonna waste your time so this is how you can use the agent by the way with this agent you can just talk with it and you know maybe you can learn some one-on-one -on -one level information like like what should i know about unit testing in golang maybe you don't know about the unit testing in golang and you want to learn about the things and uh, the basic things as you can see it says it has a testing package uh, built in and the file the test file should name named with the underscore test file and the test functions must start with test as you can see all of them are starting with the tests and the test organization table driven tests i've written a lot of tests in .NET and i'm not used to this kind of tests as you can see it has an, an array of cases like this is the name and this is the expected response and you are giving the cases and you are just running all of them in parallel all in a for loop you know and and i'm not used to it so this is the culture of unit test in golang for the mocking as i said testify mock testify is the one of the most popular libraries in the unit tests for the test execution you, you can just use go test and for the for to see the for to see the cover 
you can just use slash cover etc so while you are talking with actually agents and you know llms you don't have to look for a lot of resources for the level of 101 as you can see it has it has best, best practice as well like a range act assert and test independence and focus test and let's say you have already test you can just say should i refactor anything in thing in this file i'm talking about all those tests and then you can maybe get some ideas to refactor for any of your files i think that is a great way to use agents and it says yes there are a few refactoring opportunities to improve readability maintainability and test organization okay let's see what it has recommending i'm hoping it has great ideas but for this file maybe it hasn't but you just need to check for your file so it has extracted some helper function that's great applied dry principle okay so probably uh, avoiding the duplications adding semantic section structure like arrange a desert great a certain response for example they are probably duplicating and let's see what it has got thing else yeah i think the new version is much more clear right much more readable that's great and that is all for this video as you can see cursor ai cursor ai has a lot of features like cursor rules mcps and you know it has a lot of models inside of it you need to just play with it with it to embrace it and for the dotnet projects it has license issues right now so so when i'm playing with dotnet projects i can't run the project inside of the cursor ai so i'm just talking with the chat then i'm moving back to the, my intellij my rider project and then i'm running the project or running the test if i'm generating tests and then i'm coming back to the cursor and talking with again if i am having an error message i'm passing it back to the cursor so it has some issues with the .NET, but with the golang as you can see it is it is working great that's it for today see you in the next videos may the force be with you